Okay, the purpose of this example here is to take a pretty straightforward convection situation uh, and figure out what the convection coefficient h has to do with uh, the gradient of temperature uh, and a surface temperature. And so our situation, we'll give it some material parameters just so it feels a little more real here, uh, is a stainless steel plate with water flowing uh, past the plate. On one side of the plate, it's kept at a, a constant temperature of 100 degrees Celsius. Uh, the water is at 25 degrees Celsius. Uh, and we don't know what our temperature is at uh, the surface between the fluid uh, and the solid. And that's what we're interested in finding out. And so we're going to solve this to figure out an equation for our convection co uh, our surface temperature rather uh, and our temperature gradient. Uh, and then we'll take a look at what that equation tells us about a situation like this. So we're going to start um, by setting our surface as a control uh, surface because we know uh, if we create a infinitesimal control volume right here, uh, that's not going to gain any energy or lose any energy. So we can uh, write that whatever goes into that surface by conduction through the solid uh, is going to leave that surface by convection. So those two uh, fluxes have to be equal to each other. And then we're going to sub in our rate equation. So pretty straightforward uh, so far. So Fourier's law on the left, our convection rate equation on the right. And the next step is to recognize that at steady state, uh, we're going to have a linear uh, temperature field in our steel. Um, so instead of having a dt dx term, uh, we're going to uh, make a term that captures that entire thickness. So delta x here is that 0 0.05 meters. Uh, and then our slope of that temperature field is the difference in the two surface temperatures divided by x. Once we have that, uh, we can um, start to... Uh, pull out our T surface one, because that's what we're interested in here. So we've got a TS one on both sides here, uh, and that's gonna be hard for us to solve. So all we're doing is an algebraic rearrangement. We're multiplying this guy out, uh, multiplying this guy out, and then moving the TS one terms over to the right-hand side, okay? So just a little algebra there. And then here, we're actually solving uh, for TS1. Uh, and this is going to be a little bit hard to get a sense. We might kind of look at this and say, what's going on here? Uh, but because we've got an H uh, in both the, uh, the denominator and the numerator, it's hard just uh, by observation to recognize what's going on. So we're going to save that equation and plot it out uh, on our next slide. But that gives us an equation for TS1. We could change our parameters to whatever we wanted. Uh, and find out what our surface was. Then from the definition of H, uh, which we uh, solved for earlier, uh, which looks like this, uh, we can rearrange that. Um, so this is the definition of H, but rearrange so that we're solving for uh, the gradient of temperature. And that gives us an equation for the gradient of temperature. And what we're interested in is what do these two equations mean? Um, so let's look at those uh, and plot them out. And that's what we have here. Here are two equations uh, for our surface temperature and our temperature gradient. And we're going to plot uh, those values as a function of h. So you can see that h serves uh, in both of those equations uh, from 5 to 20,000. And the reason we chose, or 50 to 20,000. The reason we chose those values is because those are um, sort of the two extremes of the convection coefficient H that you can get uh, when you have uh, a liquid um, as your fluid. So here's our temperature, surface temperature plot. Uh, and as we look at this surface temperature plot, as we have, so this is low convection over here, uh, and this is really violent convection over here you can see that your temperature of your surface uh, goes down um, pretty severely, right? We're going basically from 90 degrees uh, to 25 degrees. So almost from 100 to 25 
uh, in terms of what that surface temperature can be. If our convection is violent over here, what we'll find is that uh, that surface temperature gets really cool, right? Why is that? Because we're throwing that cold water at that surface, right? If our convection is really violent, we're constantly replacing any hot fluid that's next to the surface with colder fluid, uh, and that's going to that's gonna cool that uh, steel down very quickly. Uh, and what's going to happen to our flux? Well, this really tells us, because we're at steady state, uh, this value tells us what kind of flux we're going to get, right? What's going to determine our flux in the solid? The gradient of temperature. Fourier's law tells us that dt dx is going to be uh, the most important term there. And so if this surface is 95, our uh, dt dx is going to be pretty small and our flux is low. But if that convection can cool that surface, we're going to move a lot of thermal energy through that, through that plate. So over here, that with low convection, uh, our surface temperature stays warm, uh, and we don't get much flux. And over here, we're cooling down that surface by throwing cool fluid at that hot surface, uh, and the flux through the solid then is very large. The second plot we have here, which I accidentally <laughs> clicked on before we got here, shows dt dx at the surface as a function of h. Uh, and again, here we can see it's pretty clear that as H gets bigger, our gradient of temperature is going to get bigger. Uh, and so as our convection gets more violent over here, uh, we're going to see a larger dt uh, dx in the fluid, right? right? This is right next to the surface in that no-slip region. And again, what does that tell us about flux? Well, if we have a large dt dx, uh, then we're going to have a large flux, okay? And that's going to be true over here, too. It's a little harder to see in this plot, but this dt dx in the solid is also going up, as we found out uh, when we looked at the solid uh, over here in terms of the solid temperature. And they have to both go up, right? Because the convection uh, flux at the surface has to equal the conduction flux at the surface. And so if my convection flux goes up, my dt dx in the fluid goes up, then my dt dx in the solid goes up. Okay, And so that's a problem that just tells us, gives us a little sense of the relationship between our convection coefficient, uh, the surface temperature, what that does to a surface temperature, uh, and what it does to our temperature gradient in the fluid.